As a photographer, underwater or topside, there's three values that you need to concern yourself with to properly expose an image. Those are aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. But today we're gonna to talk about aperture. Aperture is one of the most complex of the three and perhaps the most important to understand. I change aperture underwater more frequently than anything else, so let's talk about why that is. Think of your aperture like a pinhole. The larger it gets, the more light goes through. That's the easy part. The aperture value is called the F number and each change in value is called an F stop. The F number scale is actually opposite the way you would expect it to run. A larger F number means a smaller aperture. So an aperture of F22 is considerably smaller than an aperture of say F4. Now each change in F stop, for example, going from F5.6 to F8, reduces the light by half. So F22 is one F stop away from F16 and therefore it captures half of the amount of light. Photographers can often be heard saying, a stop is a stop is a stop. On a high quality camera, the shutter speed, ISO, and aperture can easily be changed independently to affect the brightness of the photo. Aperture is so commonly changed though because it also affects the overall focus of the image. And of course, focus tends to be one of our primary concerns as photographers. Aperture affects focus because it affects the camera's depth of field. Depth of field refers to how much of the scene is in sharp focus, not side to side, but front to back or the depth of your image. So the high level principle here is to understand that small apertures give us a greater depth of field. There's two ways that this becomes important underwater. On the surface, photographers are often trying to shoot with the largest or widest open aperture available to create a soft bokeh effect. Think about the iPhone portrait mode, for example, which replicates this, where the subject is in focus, but the rest of the background is softly blurred. It makes the photo look more rich, professional, uh, with an undistracted background. So therefore, F1 and F2 are very desirable apertures for portrait photography, but we almost never use them underwater. Here's why. A dome port underwater changes the way your subject looks to the camera. The subject looks much closer and slightly curved. To the camera, the sides of your frame will actually look closer than the center. So you need some extra depth of field to keep all of that in focus at the same time. Smaller apertures between F1 and F5.6 generally will have problems with edge sharpness when shooting behind a dome port underwater. You want to shoot F8 or higher when possible and always focus on the closest subject that you want in your frame. The depth of field is much more forgiving moving away from the camera than it is coming closer. And that's why one of my favorite sayings for getting great underwater photos is F8 and be there. the water actually gives you a natural bokeh blur behind your subject. It's amazing how quickly objects you lose their color and their clarity with just a little bit of distance underwater. We want to shoot small apertures almost always and even smaller apertures for macro photography and for close focus wide angle. When your entire frame is composed within a few inches of depth, you need a really high percentage of that to be in focus to make sense of a small subject. I typically shoot apertures between F16 and F22, even smaller if I'm using a macro lens. Next time you're underwater, try bracketing your aperture by taking a few shots of the same subject, but then change the aperture by one stop in between each of them. With some practice, you'll quickly start to notice and pick up on the relationship between aperture, light, and focus. So that's the basics of aperture. Shoot small apertures for better focus underwater. It really was that simple after all.